we'll get started. Right, good afternoon everyone. Uh, please be advised this meeting will be recorded and posted on the Council's YouTube channel. Um, can all those speaking ensure you switch on your microphone before addressing the meeting? And remember to switch it off when you have finished speaking. When voting, can members raise their hand? Um, item one, apologies for absence. Councillor Smith and Slattery, Chair. Thank you very much. Any other? Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, item two, any urgent business? I see none. Item three, declarations of interest. None. Item four, is Cabinet happy to agree the minutes of the last meeting? Please raise your hands. Thank you. Now, just before we start, I'd like to welcome new cabinet members uh, to uh, the table. I guess this is your <coughs> first cabinet meeting uh, since being appointed at the full council AGM. So welcome uh, to cabinet uh, where we will deliver for this council. Um, and I'm sure that you'll be keenly working on how you are delivering in your respective roles to deliver our key missions in our Greenwich. Um, we'll move now to item five, draft statement of accounts. This is to consider and comment upon the authority's draft statement of accounts for the year ending the 31st of March, 2024. Uh, do members require a briefing? Do members have any questions or comments? Do mem are members happy? Yep, yeah. Councillor Highland. Oh, thank you, Chair. Just an errata. Uh, erratum, rather. Um, I'm listed in related party transactions as being the president of the Royal Heritage Trust. I'm not. It, I, I am uh, president of the World Heritage Site in Greenwich, and they're entirely different things, as uh, members will know. So, with that, Chair, I commend the report to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. I'm sure we can get that uh, updated. Um, accordingly. Thank you. All right, well, as the report comes back for approval later and still a draft, uh, we'll get that updated for you, uh, Councillor Highlands. Yep. Are members happy to agree decisions as, as outlined in section 1.1? Thank you. Right, we'll move on to item six to note the council's outturn position. Do members require a briefing? Do members have any questions or comments? Are members happy to agree the decisions as outlined in section 1.1? Brilliant. I'm expecting you to raise your hands. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to item seven, treasury management and capital outturn. Uh, do members require a briefing? Do members have any questions or comments? I mean, I'll just say I'm grateful to all the work that we're doing under our Treasury and Management Capital, of which it has uh, set up our new sustainable transport fund, uh, is delivering all the work that we're doing around our, our, our efforts to build uh, our capital projects, including other things around housing as well. Um, and I'm sure that we'll continue to uh, deliver through our Treasury and Capital Management outturn. Are members happy to agree decisions as outlined in sections 1.1 to 1.4 of the report? Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to item eight, the midterm financial strategy 2025-2026 update. Do members require a briefing? Do members have any questions or comments? Councillor Highland. Um, <coughs> thank you, Chair. Just to thank the finance department and partners for all the work that have gone into all of these reports, very grateful to them. However, we still, as, lo as lo a local authority, are structurally underfunded 
and we understand how the new government are um, disadvantaged by the state um, of, of the country's finances and are unlikely to be able to dig us out of the problem. So if that being the case, we have a forecast gap of over 27 million in 2025-26 and another 30 million the year after. And that is in line with similar boroughs. Um, I won't name them because this is being, you know, screened out, streamed out. But suffice it to say, it isn't just Labour councils that are in this uh, problem. It is also Conservative and Lib Dem. It's right across the board. And until the government sort out a national care uh, system, we will still face untapped demand, both for adults and for children. And we, we really need to protect our frontline services, but we're getting to a point where actually we need to look at everything we do and see what gives. And we want to give the best to our residents, including culture, not just at the emptying of the bins, whilst that is very important, I agree. Um, so I'm hoping that we will see a relaxation when it comes to the settlement by the government, but I can't bet on it, you know. Well, actually, betting by politicians is bad news anyway, isn't it? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor. Highland. Uh, I'm going to bring in Councillor Smith. I just have a question. Um, I know none of us know yet because it's not been agreed, but um, if the pay rise for um, local government workers, public sector workers is five point something percent as, as is being um, bandied around in the press, what, what would be the effect of that on, on our budget? Thank you. Damon. I mean, obviously that settlement is in respect of a certain cohort of workers. There is, um, uh, there are obviously discussions that are ongoing between the representatives of the employers for local government workers um, and the trades unions, and there is an offer on the table. If the offer that is on the table was to be agreed, um, then we have that uh, fully funded. Um, if it's above, I mean, if it's more in the region of um, uh, what has been settled elsewhere, then that's going to put a pressure on us. But I'd need to go back and look at the sort of precise details. Any other questions or comments? Um, well, thanks, thanks for the report, officers, and uh, Councillor Highland for your report. I guess, you know, one message that we collectively as the Cabinet have to send to government is the pressures that councils are going through and this year when we set our budget in February uh, we saw the decisions and really tough decisions that we took to safeguard our finances now we're about to go straight into that process again and as a council and cabinet we must think strategically about how we hold discussions with central government about realizing where councils are as the new government um, and I note that they are looking at different settlements but we're yet to see um, get to see where they arrive on how they deal with their spending review or whether they do one or not. So let's all just be aware of all of that and note that, you know, it's a very uh, uh, tough time uh, for councils at the moment. And whilst we're still in this process, um, we need to make sure that we work together to, to, leave, to deliver for this council, but also balance our budget to continue being a council that survives for its residents. Right, are members happy to agree? agree? I'll just do that again. Are members happy to agree the decisions as outlined in section 1.1 to 1.3 of the report? Agree. Thank you very much. Right, we'll now move on to item 9, to adopt community engagement framework. Do members require a briefing? No. no? Okay. 
Uh, do members have any questions or comments? Okay, right. I'll, I guess this is me, because you're pointing at me, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely one that I plan to talk on. I mean, at the early onset of this council, we invested quite heavily through our uh, financial MTFS and budget process to invest in community engagement. Today, you are seeing the results of that work through setting up a new community engagement team, bringing together a new community engagement handbook and pledge to our residents on how we'll engage with them. And we've just spoken about the toughness that we see uh, within council services and delivery. Through those processes, we are going to have to work hand in hand with our residents, speaking with them, innovating, thinking about how we deliver for the future at a time when we're seeing a huge population increase, more demand for services, and three thinking about all the way we do council work from different services to new strategies to thinking about the different innovation that we want to implement. So the reports before you today speak about how we rethink how we engage with our communities, making sure that we can be vulnerable about the challenges that we have, but still hold great conversations with residents. And it's an expectation not just for councillors, but for staff and partners. And actually last, uh, uh, last week when we held our, um, our Greenwich partnership event, we saw how everyone engaged and gave feedback around it. We expect and anticipate that everyone will hold this document and use it to do the work that we seek it to do and seek it to achieve, which is engage with our communities in a way that is meaningful, taking conversations to them. So I'm glad to see this arrival here. I want to thank officers for all their efforts uh, and work that they've done putting together the document. It's not been an easy one because actually it's gone and spoken around to many partners, but that's exactly what we should be doing. So I'm grateful to the team. I'm grateful for all councillors who have fed in, but also attending the sessions that the team put on on how we engage with our residents uh, and the training that was provided to councillors and other staff at the same time. There's still obviously more work to go in terms of thinking about how we change, how we do data analytics, how we implement a new way of collecting consultation information, engage or inform. So we're hoping to continue the work and there's still an action plan to implement very parts of it on a board that I chair as leader of the council. So I'm happy to see it to come to cabinet today. Uh, do other members have any questions or comments or to just speak about you know, what they're seeing changing in their community engagement? I see no more. Okay, we'll now move to the decision. Are members happy to agree the decisions as outlined in section 1.1 to 1.4 of the report? Agreed. Brilliant. We'll now move on to item 10. Do members, uh, this is the children and young people's plan 2024 to 2029. Do members require a briefing? No. Are members, do members have any questions or comments? Councillor Kyra. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just uh, wanted to, first of all, say a few words about this. Uh, the previous government in 2010 decided that local authorities no need to complete a children and young people plan anymore. Uh, but us as Royal Borough Greenwich, we know how important it is for the vision of our borough and also for the way we look after our children and how we work with our partners. So we continued with that trend to set a children and young people plan every five years. So this new policy that's coming forward uh, talks about how we're gonna work with young people. It was created by young people to shape up the way we work with them and also with all our partners. I would like to thank Florence and all their team to put this together and also my predecessor, Matt Morrow, for all the work he's done around this. It's important that we continue delivering on this because children and young people are our future and there will be our future politicians, our future doctors, and we need to make sure we give them the best life as possible in the Royal Borough of Greenwich. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Councillor Jack Smith? Um, I, I welcome the plan. Uh, I think it was a very wise decision to continue with the plan when we weren't required to do it anymore. And I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Children's Services on achieving Ofsted excellent status, which, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which uh, is an amazing achievement and well done to everybody involved. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith, for mentioning that. And yes, let's just place on the record that obviously this report just comes out on the back of a fantastic Ofsted report uh, demonstrating 
um, you know, the comments uh, that the inspector made about how um, corporate leaders and political leaders work tirelessly to live for kids. You know, without our partnership working and working collectively, that wouldn't have been able to achieve. But more importantly, it sets the precedence of how we move forward uh, in delivering for children and young people, making sure that we can be unapologetic corporate parents uh, and seek to make sure we provide the future that they can live that has the best life for them. So we continue working on the back of that offset to deliver even more for our young people. So well done to everyone that was involved in that. Are members happy to agree the decisions as outlined in section 1.1 of the report? Okay. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to item 11. This is the Royal Greenwich, or the Borough of Royal Greenwich Air Quality Action Plan to adopt and publish the borough's air quality action plan 2023 to 2028. Do members require a briefing? Our member, do members have any questions or comments? comments. Councillor Lacau. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, this is just a statutory document, which is a, a, a formality, really, um, as part of um, London-wide air quality monitoring. It um, ensures that our standards, uh, everything that we measure is standardised and um, can be measured um, across the board. I really would like to thank Leanne and her team for the work she did on this, they did on this, and um, uh, in all fairness, pass it uh, for comment to my colleague who was the cabinet lead before I took over. Um, I'm always able to jump in and take credit for the work you've done. So perhaps you might want to comment, but I think it's a good piece. Councillor um, Cousins, would you like to come in as well? Thank you, Councillor Cow. Um, lovely. Thank you very much for that. And definitely um, where you ended up with thanking officers, I'll just start with a little bit on that because the report is a little bit late, but that's because the lead officer on that has moved on. And we do obviously wish her the best with all her endeavours in, in moving on um, to, to look to, to, with her career and, and family needs, etc. The plan is a London wide document. It is um, based on the legal requirements, so it's not something we have a choice to do, but it is something that we want to do anyway in terms of the health and well being of our residents. Uh, the community will know that there's lots of information in the media about air pollution its long-term impact and consequences, potentially faith fatally, especially on our, our younger residents. And so it is important that we all engage with this uh, strategy. The report contains what was achieved under the previous five years. It's unusual in that this one is a five-year term. So the next five years this covers is 2023 to 2028. And there are lots of things there. It's not just about the transport and the fuel and our low impact zones and trees we plant. I'm also um, reaching out to individual residents and saying that there are decisions that we can all make on an individual basis that will magnify and have an impact. So for example, losing your vehicle one less day a week or not at all during the week if you can and trying to use the transport services more and just demanding that there's more transport if there is less in your particular area. So yes, I definitely commend this report and look forward to us building on what we've achieved thus far and um, to 2028, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cousins. I thank you to both of you for the work that you've put in on this report collectively uh, with your officers. I was just reflecting really, and, and it's great to see the level of um, uh, uh, actions in, in the report, uh, but more importantly, thinking about how we're using our uh, treasury management strategy to deliver upon some of the key things in this report. So the allocation to bring forward school healthy streets is a really important uh, contribution uh, to this and the overall seven, seven, seven million sustainable transport fund to help deliver all of these things. So it's really, you know, really putting our money where our mouth's on and making sure that we can get the right quality of life and health for our residents, which is set out in our uh, corporate vision, our Greenwich. Um, are members happy to agree the decisions as outlined in section 1.1? Thank you very much. We'll now move on to item 12. 
this is to um, uh, approve the objective set out in our SEND and inclusion strategy 2024 to 2029 uh, and, to, and to approve the proposed publication and communication arrangements. Um, do you members have any questions or comments? Councillor Cairo. Oh, thank you, Chair. Uh, what can I say about SEND? SEND has got a very close place in my heart as a father of a young child with SEND. Uh, across the country, we've seen the pressure that's happening, and Greenwich, we're like any other London borough, feeling the pressure regarding the SEND with uh, children and young people that are going through this. But this policy, this strategy that's coming forward is a shape that is going to take the borough forward, that we used it to you know, include young people's voice this time and have always used young people to shape up what we want to deliver for them locally. I would like to thank Mark Morrow again for his hard work around this. I'm picking up a lot of his work and Florence and their team. But we will be doing a lot more to engage on this and do a lot more with government as well because we do need a lot more money to deliver on what we need for young people across the borough. And we will lobby government for what we can. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. And I know you, you have your own personal journey uh, uh, with, um, uh, with SEND uh, yourself, and I'm glad that you use that to do your role. So thank you for that yourself uh, and being a, an example. And obviously both myself and yourself uh, and a former cabinet member have been going around to schools, speaking to them about the experiences of uh, children with SEND. And, you know, uh, I'm grateful that this is really a national topic uh, about how we support children who need more SEND provision and support to make sure they can have right learning environments that support them to learn. And that's really key. And I think as a council collectively, every single one of us needs to be on the front foot of that, speaking about how we create learning environments to support people with SEND. Uh, and that's gonna be fundamentally key as the government sets out their new strategy for how they support schools and uh, parents and advocacy uh, groups. This is a space that we see parents come together and really put on uh, work to help support um, adv advocacy for other parents. So I'm grateful to everyone that's working in our community um, to support, just like the Javin Coca Foundation, which the mayor recently uh, supported via his uh, charity as a charity. Uh, and I'm grateful to that. Are members happy uh, to agree the decisions as outlined in section 1.1 to 1.2? Thank you very much. We'll now move on to uh, item 13, to agree the proposed community resource strategy and associated needs analysis. Do members require a briefing? Do members have any questions or comments? Councillor Cousins. Thank you, Chair. I think um, we, we'll be hearing quite a little bit from Councillor <laughs> Kira with these um, reports because um, it's this transition of us moving from one cabinet portfolio to another. So I've just taken up the mantle as cabinet member for community, um, oh, I was gonna say the wrong one, for, <laughs> for equalities, culture and communities, which was um, my, my colleague sitting to my left here's prior role. So he's um, overseen the development of this, but I just wanted to take a opportunity before I ask him to say something on it, just to say, Chair, that I think this actually links in with the community engagement framework uh, and, and demonstrates that we're taking these they're not just paper documents, they are live documents, because below that we are also developing other strategies. And this particular one is like an umbrella strategy looking specifically at how we are funding the voluntary and community sector and charitable sectors that supports us in the delivery, as you said just before, the SEND delivery, and, and you mentioned the Javan Coker, and there are other organizations that's working in that field to ensure delivery. The point of this strategy is to increase proportionality of resources so that we are not just year on year out funding the same organizations and expecting change. And that's gonna be done through needs analysis. But let me hand over to my colleague and then perhaps you can hand back to me and I'll come Hand to me and I'll, Thank you. the chair will, I'll call, I'll call Adele in. Thank you. Councillor Kyra. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cousins for that. The community resource strategy is, is one of our most important thing, and we discussed this on many occasions. It's the golden thread that goes through all departments. I know we've been working closely with Drez as well on this and the team to make sure that we look at where the needs are across the borough. 
There's a toolkit that's been created from the back of this that can see what's missing and where and how we can improve on it. And fair proportion, as Councillor Cousins has mentioned, and also equity across the playing field. There's some parts of the borough that, that you wouldn't expect us suffer from thingy deprivation that a lot of people wouldn't know about, but this report highlights them parts of the borough. And now for, it's for us all across the different departments to make sure that we bring them all to a playing level and not only tapping into the voluntary sector, also tapping into our business partners, also tapping into all other you know, faith organizations because they've got resources as well they can offer forward. So it's a life document, as Councillor Cousins has mentioned, and we'll continue building up on this chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, I, I appreciate, um, uh, uh, appreciate the effort that you placed into it as well. Councillor Cousins, did you want to come back in? Um, just to summarise by saying, you know, obviously we do commend, highly commend this report um, to be adopted today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thanks uh, to officers. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, thanks for all the efforts you guys have put in alongside your officers and the work that you've done uh, to make this come to life in your right. It does feed into our community engagement um, and it also feeds into all the work we're trying to do on mental health, uh, all the work we're trying to do on achieving our aims to ensure the quality of life and health of our residents. So all very important and contributing to that. Right. Do members, uh, are members happy to agree the decisions as outlined in section 1.1 to 1.6 of the report? Agreed. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to item 15, sorry, 14, cultural strategy. This is to adopt the cultural strategy 2024 to 2030. Um, do members require a briefing? Uh, do members have any questions or comments? Councillor uh, Cousins? Yes, once again, I am going to um, pass on to my um, fellow councillor, councillor Carey about this. It's, it's, it's another strategy that he has been working on with officers for a very long time. Before I um, pass back to you, Chair, um, <laughs> I will say that although this is the first cultural strategy that Royal Greenwich has produced, it is not the first cultural stuff that we're doing. And I think it's very, very important to recognize that um, Royal Greenwich is a borough of culture, full stop. We have heritage Greenwich, we've got the waterfronts, we've got wonderful green spaces, we have Woolwich, I mean, who wouldn't want to come to Woolwich? We have this, we've got lots of things, we've got all our community, very diverse and creative and colourful community groups, etc., that are always putting on events on a practically month, monthly basis. Our libraries and all the things they do. So Greenwich has been doing culture. The, perp culture, the purpose of this strategy is to set a focus, is to set a direction. And so on that basis, Chair, I'll hand back to you. Very much, uh, you know, uh, it's important that we recognize the uh, authority of the chair in these <laughs> meetings and understand that I call people to speak in that regard. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Councillor uh, Kyra, and then I'll go to Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. What can I say about the culture strategy? It's one of the, spent a lot of days onto this, you know, the culture, what, what I can say about it actually, this is bold and creative. It brought organizations and residents together to shape up what this should look like. It touches on 13 missions out of our 20 missions that we got in our, our Greenwich, which is very important. And it also highlights that culture is within all of us, regardless what, we, what your background is. Everybody celebrates culture in one way or the other. Uh, when we set out on the journey as well, it was recognized by the Mayor of London that's why we have achieved an impact award for Borough of Culture, because we had a clear vision that Greenwich delivers a lot, but there was no, nothing on concrete on paper that shows a way forward. And this is something that will not only take us to the next level, but will also connect up a lot of the work that we're doing around uh, place planning, neighborhoods, mental health, and, and a lot of other stuff that we're doing across the borough. I would like to thank the team on the hard work. They've been through a lot to deliver this and you know, back and forward. 
few restructures there to make sure that we get it right, but we did get it right, and I'm proud of this document, and I'm sure Councillor Cousins will deliver on it. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, and thanks for your collective hard work on that. Uh, Councillor Smith? Just a picky point and then question, really. So on page 777, um, there's a bit about community consultation and, and talks about target groups for community consultation. And the first bit says deprivation, and it lists a number of areas. And I'm not really clear what those areas are, because they're a bit vague. Um, you know, Middle Park, Elton West, Woolwich, Riverside. Are we talking about old walls? Are we talking about geographical areas? Um, to me, that's not specific enough. I think we should do it in wards. Because we, we understand what a ward is. That area is a bit amorphous and huge, really. If we say Charlton, what do we mean? Charlton's a huge area. Peninsula's a huge area. You know, Woolwich Riverside is a ginormous area. I, I think we probably need to be specific about the wards in which the deprivation is rather than just name general areas. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. Um, on that point, I'm guessing, uh, I mean, we potentially have two options. That would need to be updated in the report uh, before we can agree it. Now, I'm going to suggest that we recommend that we just do an addendum to the item that sets that out uh, and kind of go from there. Uh, but our, and Councillor Cousins, did you have a point to come in on? Um, thanks, Chair. I was going to say that it, it does say around those rather than the specifics. So it's usually the specifics that trap us, whereas we have the flexibility. Um, these are based on the super output areas and things mm -hmm. like that. So we are sort of guided and it could change from year to year perhaps. But it says around rather than the specifics of an area, thanks. Hold on, hold on, sorry, sorry guys. The chair hasn't, um, yeah, thank you very much. Noted, the action that we'll take on that point is um, that we will update it and that will come, there will be an amendment at the addendum to it at some point. Pardon? I'm now going to, I will bring you back in, Jackie. I'm just saying those listed mm. are old ward names. Those wards don't exist anymore. So we need to update that with the new ward names. Thank you very much. Now, we'll take that point. Thank you very much. So, in line with that addendum item, are our members happy to agree uh, the substance, the, the, the vast majority of the cultural strategy uh, with the edit to that that will come back at a later date to Cabinet? Are members happy to agree to 1.1 to 1.6 of the report? Thank you very much. Now, I know earlier I skipped to item 15, but we now have arrived at the item. Uh, so uh, this is to agree um, the GS Plus and GSS uh, review of direction of travel. Um, are members, uh, do members require a briefing? Do members have any questions or comments? Denise, Councillor Highland. Uh, thank you, Chair. Well, it, it, it is, as many of the items on this agenda tonight, or this afternoon, are really important. And this is very important for the Council, but also for the workforce, who have been anxious in recent weeks, months, about what their future will be. And, and we've got at least 299 staff in GS Plus and 21 permanent staff in GSS. And this report has the support of the two outgoing chairs of GSS and GS Plus, also the chair of the Transformation Group, and also the support of the incoming chair. Now, What's important about this is that a decision was taken by the Council in 2019 uh, to insource the companies. 
Since then, however, we've now reviewed the operations of the companies and things have changed since that original decision, whereby the companies are more stable, more profitable, and the proposal is to keep the companies carrying on under their present delivery model and renew the strategic partnership agreement with the council for a period of 10 years. You'll note that any surplus can be, as we're the shareholder, the main shareholder, any surplus can be repatriated back to the council um, where we will help meet our savings targets that we have for the forthcoming year. And, and I would just like to, on that note, um, say 1.2 is where the council retains responsibility for the net assets, but also the liabilities from GS Plus's membership of the Royal Borough of Greenwich's pension fund. Um, lastly, to thank everyone who works in GS Plus and everyone who works in GSS and the people who put this report together. Stuart, thank you very much for all the work that's been done by uh, Mersad, Damon, and everyone else that has contributed. Um, it's a very, to me, it's an absolute no-brainer, and I commend it to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Highland. Um, and thank you for all the officers that have contributed to this report. Um, are members happy to agree to decisions as outlined in section 1.1 to 1.2 of the report? Agreed. Thank you very much. And this is the last cabinet um, that we will have uh, before the summer recess. So thank you for all the work you've been doing uh, this past, uh, uh, these few months that we are into the year. And I'm grateful. And I will see you at full council tonight, everybody. Thank you very much.